Hey everybody! Hair's looking crazy today. Never mind all that. That's not important. Uh, today, uh, I'm gonna be doing a string change, and uh, I do it all the time. I got a million guitars I gotta maintain, so uh, I figured I'd, you know, do a little video. Maybe help some of you folks out, or maybe just don't do them enough yourself, or you know, maybe uh, want some little tips and tricks. Um, but yeah, I'll go through the list here on stuff you're gonna need, and uh, let's uh. Let's have some fun, huh? Figure did this all the time working at Guitar Center. Learned some really cool things along the way. Some good friends that work there. All right, so <clears throat> this is a pretty basic set of tools, but it's uh, some stuff you'll need. First off, we've got clip-on Peterson tuner. This thing's pretty nice. Uh, you don't need one quite this fancy and it's pretty expensive. The um, only reason I got it is because I got a pretty sweet discount working at uh, Guitar Center when I got there, but this guy's normally about 80 bucks or something. It's crazy. Yeah, you don't need one quite that nuts, but simple Phillips, flathead, decent set of dykes, okay pliers, Small metric Allen wrenches, hex heads. I've got some tiny little <coughs> uh, Phillips and flathead screwdrivers. String winder isn't necessary, but uh, you know makes a little bit of a difference. I've got some good old uh, Dunlop guitar and polish uh, cleaner. Stuff's pretty nice. I like it. I'm gonna have to get some more soon. Running low on lemon oil too. This is for your fretboard. This is good stuff here. Um, these are my particular choice of strings. Um, and the gauge that I, I've typically been using. Uh, DR happens to be my favorite company. Um, I really like these ones just because I, I can't quite get the other ones uh, anywhere near me. And then a uh, decent micro microfiber uh, uh, cloth. And it's two-sided so you can get kind of two different surfaces on it. And then got a roll of toilet paper there. Or uh, <clears throat> paper towels. But uh, this is the guitar here that we'll be, I'll be working on today. It's a fun one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Ibanez XPT 700 Zephos. This is from the very first year of production. Um, really, f really fun uh, <coughs> guitar here. This is the second one I've owned. Uh, the first one was white. That's a hell of a story about that guitar. I'll tell you guys sometime if you'd like, but for now, we're just gonna change some strings, huh? So the only thing I'm missing right now is a. Uh, I'd like to get they call a cradle cue uh, for the neck. Um, but here is the guitar. I'll do just a quick, quick little sweep here. 25.5 scale length, 24 frets, Demarzio pickups. I believe this is the Edge Two Ibanez Bridge, uh, completely floating recessed tremolo. <clears throat> neck through construction I've got Dunlop strap locks on it killer guitar um, now this one is stamped the triple zero in the back somebody told me once that that means it's a factory second uh, I'm not really sure now most of the time if a guitar is a factory second there's some sort of flaw with it um, <clears throat> but I have had this guitar for a couple of years now and haven't noticed anything. So we're going to start with a couple of things here just to kind of do. Now it's not going to be completely necessary all the time and this is particularly going to be uh, an instructional video for folks who have tremolo guitars, which uh, I mean 90% of the ones I've owned have been. But um, like I said, it's not always necessary to take this plate off, but we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. So. Kind of goofy holding the phone and doing this, but I'm not fancy enough to have one of them little stand deals. Most of the time you're going to have six screws in your back cover plate here. And this is for the tremolo cavity. And like I said, this isn't always necessary to do, but it makes things a little bit easier if you have to make adjustments. Oh, Ryan, don't be scared. Floyd Roses are a lot of fun when you get them figured out. 
it really is not as intimidating as folks think as soon as you get some tools in your hand learn a few simple tricks that I'll go over with you guys today about them I do appreciate everybody watching here this is not just for me I mean the guitar needs it but this is for you folks out there I've owned 44 guitars in my uh, 15 years of playing now almost all of them um, <clears throat> have had tremolo systems of some sort on them and um, in the beginning yeah they're pretty intimidating but uh, you know after a while I get better I have this little rag here just so I can catch all my screws and stuff so I don't lose anything it super sucks when you do I mean you can find them real cheap but uh, best to not have to replace them so <clears throat> The tremolo system is just a little bit different inside these Ibanezes, um, especially on kind of the higher end ones like this. Um, but a few things you'll always find on the inside of your cavity is going to be your your spring claw, your springs, and then you'll see this is your tone block here. Now Ibanez does this slick thing on some of their tremolo systems where they have the, this backing bar. Now it doesn't happen very often. But sometimes your strings can pop, or your springs can pop out from the back. There's little holes that they'll sit in inside. So this backing plate really helps. I really like that. Um, I happen to put this piece of foam in here just to kind of <laughs> keep the springs from vibrating as much. Kind of creates some overtones that you don't necessarily always want to hear. Now this wire here is your grounding wire. Um, it's there to ground your electronics. Uh, I've definitely been electrocuted quite a few times <laughs> by, uh, by faulty grounds and guitars, and uh, typically it causes a bunch of excess noise too. So she's uh, kind of dirty. Sat at my uh, guitar player's house for quite some time, and, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, stuff happens. But I got some good cleaners, so... <clears throat> now, the big trick to all this is that... Most of the time when you do string changes, most folks are going to go ahead and take off all their strings at the same time. That's a big time no-no with uh, the Floyd Rose stuff, or, or even these floating tremolos that Ibanez makes. Um, <clears throat> the trick is to just do one at a time. Now, uh, so, <clears throat> um, the way these floating bridges work, uh, they work on a fulcrum system. The string tension, which in standard E-tuning uh, with tens, uh, is roughly 120 to 140 pounds of pull. And your entire bridge system here pivots on these two posts. And then is held tension for an equilibrium by these springs in the back. Now this is a very typical spring configuration set up here. Some folks will run more springs. I've even seen a couple of folks do less springs a few different patterns but this typically seems to be the best kind of go-to now <clears throat> these are some uh, crusty old strings it's been quite some time so you know I broke one and uh, it's time to change them so like I said you only want to do one string at a time but there are a few things that we're gonna do first uh, first off we need to select our correct Allen wrench which is gonna be this number three here for our locking nuts And you know, pretty simple. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. You just want to take them off. Now, anytime you are messing with these, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to he man them and tighten them all the way down and start stripping things out. And it really doesn't give you that much more uh, grip because they're only going to do so much before. You start to strip some parts out. Now, Floyd Rose does make some upgrade parts. Uh, so does FU Tone, um, where you can get stainless steel hardware, which will last a lot longer, which is pretty fantastic. I've got one guitar with those upgrades on them right now. But, <clears throat> locking nuts are off. Now, there's a couple of tricks you can do to where you can put something in here in this cavity as a backing block to make sure your bridge stays level while you're doing all this. I don't have anything clever to use right now. Some folks will use a little mini BIC. Um, I've seen folks use uh, those bigger erasers. Um, one of the slickest tricks I've seen is a uh, <coughs> uh, witch hat knob, uh, like the kind you would typically find on like a Fender Stratocaster. Uh, we found out worked really well. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to worry about any of that right now. Now you can see i got some plastic in here. That's a 
whole other thing I'll talk about later, but I'm going to take it out for now. Um, I can't get that. That's all right. I'll need it in there anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by loosening the tension on some of the strings. And I'm going to go ahead and take this broken one out real quick. Now you guys got to be careful. They'll poke the hell out of you for sure. So since that one is already off, I'm going to go ahead and take the corresponding sp string out of the package here. Ah! Yard does this slick stuff where they package it up all nice to make sure it doesn't corrode and stuff, but it sure is a lot of wasted paper. Okay. The nice thing is, is most companies are going to go ahead and label their packages so that you can see uh, kind of what, what is what, where it's supposed to go. And they'll typically be doubled up like this. Some companies will throw them all in one package and distinguish them other ways, but this is kind of how this is going to work. So in case you don't know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start here. First set. <laughs> It poke me in the eyeball. All right, so okay, two strings here. Go ahead and lay them out. Let's keep them ready. Now, <clears throat> I do almost all of this stuff on my lap, but I need to make sure that this um, spot here is open and free of the broken string. So I'm going to go ahead. These edge style tremolo systems, this nut here locks this little, wait for the camera to focus, locks this little block in place. And that's what's going to be what keeps your string in. Yep, had a little bugger in there, would have got me good. So I got that guy out. Alright, so now that that's open and free, I'm going to go ahead and take my string that's supposed to be going on there. <clears throat> my 11 my first string now this is let's see how I can do this this is your ball end here and almost all strings are gonna look like this some of them have a different color to them to distinguish um, strings and maybe a few different variations but typically typically this is kinda what's going on here now for these floating <clears throat> tremolo systems what you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take your dikes you don't want to snip off the end here. Now, some folks will take and snip right here and keep all the excess wrap on the string. I used to do that as well, thinking that the bigger surface area would give me better grip. However, I've come to find after years of doing this that that's not what you want to do because typically the extra wrap will slip off and your string will pop right out of the saddle. So I cut it right before the wrap. Nobody tell OSHA, you probably should wear some safety gear. <laughs> eye protection or something. I had a buddy fuck his eyes up real good doing this shit, but it's a whole different thing. Oh, pardon the language, by the way, it just kind of happens. So I'm going to try to do this slick here. So what you want to do, and you can feel it when you poke it in, it's only going to, oh, come on camera, it's only going to go in so far. Almost a quarter inch. Not quite but you'll feel it hit the back and you want to make sure it's lined up you want to make sure it's lined up in the center of the little channel here created for the string groove so after you get it kind of pressed in I'm going to set the foam down to do this ah, come on good angle I know you exist there. Good enough. Okay. So after you get it in, you're going to have to hold it in place. Make sure it doesn't shift around on you. Go ahead and take your Allen wrench and tighten that block back up. That same screw you used to loosen. And like I said, you don't want to He-Man these. You do want to get them nice and snug. But you don't really need to put a whole lot of force into them. Like I said, stripping parts definitely happens. And it's a big old bummer when it does. I don't know what the exact torque specs are on, on this stuff, but it really is not a whole lot. Basically, once it starts to give you some serious resistance, that's when you want to stop. Give it a little tug here, make sure it's going to be okay. Alright. 
Now, now that we've got that on, I'm going to take and set my guitar kind of down on the floor so I can reach everything properly. Now, I've seen quite a few different tricks for doing this. Typically, the wraps that I've got on here are about how you want them. A little, a little excessive on the low E, but typically you want two to three wraps. On the higher uh, treble end, like for a second and third, uh, you are typically going to want three to five wraps, depending on your string gauge. But what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and feed it through your hole here. Actually, you know what? Nope, I take that back. <clears throat> There's a couple of things we got to do real quick. Grab your pliers. Uh, otherwise, it's a 10 millimeter socket, if I remember right. Take it just tight. Just make sure they're nice and snug here. If your tuners are nice and secure, then they'll be a lot more stable. So we're going to do that on all of them. Go ahead and feed your string through. Be way better if I was gripping it in a different spot, huh? So go ahead and feed your string through. Now you don't want to pull it tight because you're going to need excess excess room for your wraps. So once again, searching for the best camera angle here. phone all right so the trick that I use my hands kind of a little bit bigger than some I suppose but I'll take right next to the nut here and I'll take and use about three fingers and make a little bridge and you want to pull the excess tail here through the string you don't want it tight you want it to just rest on your fingers that typically seems to be uh, the right amount of slack to make sure you get the proper amount of wraps. So I take and pinch it. And what I do is I give it a little bend there. Now this is kind of a slick time consume or a time reducing trick here, but I'll take this excess since we got quite a bunch that we have to wrap up and instead of going and spinning it all up, what I'll do is I'll take and just spin it around. Now you want to, we'll call this the tail. You want to go around the tail on top and then you want to go, I'm going to kind of flip it around here. You want your first wrap above the tail and you want your rest below it. That way it can kind of pinch it in place. But, let me see here. Make sure these are sitting right. Okay. Can you kind of see how that worked there? It's pinching that tail piece in. Now, you take your handy dandy little string winder, or you can use your fingers, doesn't really matter. Oh, can't reach it though. Ah! Ah. And yeah, yeah, you're right, Ryan. Everybody does this different. But, you want to keep some tension on it, just a little bit, to make sure it's going to sit right. Big point is to not kink your string at all. Because if you do, you'll feel that kink forever, and uh, it'll be harder to, uh, or it'll be easier for your string to break. You just go ahead and wind it up. I guess you can't really see what I'm doing here too well. Jeez, I gotta get like some kind of awareness thing for this camera. Huh? Okay. Oh, dang old. Come on now. So, whatever. I'll take your string winder. Uh, come on. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. Um. There we go. That's pretty good. Okay. Take your string winder. Damn. Are you serious? Uh, Alright, different approach. Hold on a second. Yeah. Dandy, dandy Lord of the Rings box here. Yes, that's a special edition. I am a cool kid. You know, extended all that fun stuff. Okay, so. Once you got your string kind of on there and your wrap started, make sure you keep some tension on there with your hand. Take your other hand. Winder if you got one, otherwise use your fingers. Spin it up. 
and it'll spin around. Now the big thing about this is I see folks all the time, whether you're running an inline headstock that's traditional or reversed like this one, or you're running a, a standard 3x3, three three, or even with your multi-scale, uh, multi-string guitars, different configurations, you want to make sure that your string is wrapping around the proper way. Now, on these reverse headstocks, some of them are a little different, but typically you want them a straight line of a path with the fretboard as possible. See right here, this is proper. If the string was on the other side of the post, that's wrong. You don't want to do that. It creates extra tension on your headstock, uh, extra pinch points for your strings, and a better chance of, of your strings breaking, failing, and coming out of tune. So this is typically how you want to do it. Now, when doing this, you don't you don't need to put a whole lot of tension on them. You don't need to perfectly tune them in the beginning because we're going to do that about six or seven damn times before this is over. But you want it kind of close so that you can keep a decent um, decent tension. Now, I use D standard tuning. Um, sometimes I use uh, C sharp uh, and occasionally I'll get squirrely and do B. Uh, typical tuning uh, from sixth to first is E, A, D, G, B, E. Now, um, in D standard, it's uh, D, G, C, F, A, D. And we're starting with this string first, so I'm not going to go all the way perfect with it, like I said, but I am going to get it kind of close. And like I said, you're going to need to do this a bunch of times anyway, so you don't need to get it perfect. These tuners are real slick. When I first started playing guitar, these style clip-on tuners did not even exist yet, which was pretty cool. Now they're pretty much the go-to for most guitar players nowadays. Now the other big thing about tuning on your floating style tremolo bridges, especially these dual locking ones, is your fine tuners. I see so many folks kind of forget about this when they're going through, but your fine tuners right here Anytime you're going to tune them for the first time, you want to set them to a neutral kind of center position. So they raise up and down their screws. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, hold on, let me flip the camera. You want to set them to kind of a neutral position where the screw is midway up and down. So we're going to go ahead and back it off. And you're going to want it right about there when you start. That way, uh, when you lock, when you tune up your string with the regular tuners and hit your uh, your str uh, string locks up top, and that way you still have a decent range to go lower or higher. Uh, so you want to start in the neutral position anytime you're starting fresh on your tuning. So that's going to be good. So now mm -hmm. on to the next string. Now some folks will go ahead and chop their their tails off um, <clears throat> uh, right away. I don't just in case I've got some slippage and need to readjust anything but yeah you want to slack it up real nice these little string winders are pretty slick um, this is uh, one by Music Nomad and I really dig them but yeah you just want to get it loose enough to where you can pull it off so there's that I'll come down here and repeat the same process for all these strings. So I'm going to go ahead and undo your string clamp. Get your old string up and out of the way. I'm going to put this over here on the couch. Probably poke myself in the butthole later with it. it sucks. All right, so back that off. We're going to go ahead and adjust the fine tuner. You know what? Let's just make all of them in the neutral position now. So we'll just go ahead and I'll just go ahead and match them. You can feel it with your fingers here. Kind of where neutral is going to be. And uh, these little guys, depending on your setup and your tuning and your string gauge, sometimes you can get a half step. I've even gotten a whole step of uh, tuning variance out of them, depending on how far you've kind of played with them but like I said you want to keep them in neutral 
Now, just for reference, these edge style systems are a little bit different, but this is cocked back a little further than you're going to want it. You're going to want it on this one about right there. That's going to be perfect. But right now it's back a little bit, so we'll have to adjust the tension uh, a little bit later. But for now, we're going to go back and get our strings here. I really do appreciate the folks watching this. Um, it's a great learning opportunity, and it, uh, you know, any way I can help the music community, I'd be more than happy to. Now, normally when you go to kind of put your strings all together and stuff, you want to kind of make sure that um, you're not getting them confused with your gauges. Uh, 15 years of playing, I've only accidentally mixed up my gauges one time ever. It was on Buddy's guitar, I felt like an idiot. <clears throat> yeah, 15 years of playing, 17 years of working on guitars, though, which is kind of funny how that works. But, um, <clears throat> anyway, so, like I said, got your ball end, you got your excess wraps, you want to take your dikes, cut it right below the wraps, that way you can get the most out of your string length and um, most out of your string. So, I said we'll take and go down here. I'll try to scoot up here a little bit closer. Pull the table on up. All right. So, this might be a little bit of a better view, I don't know. Take and stick your string in the little clamp block, block hole. I said it only goes in about quarter of an inch, depending on your tremolo system. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Now, just real quick, you can see, oh, I can't turn my phone apparently. Okay, so, this is the screw I'm turning right now. And what it does is it feeds through the saddle and pushes this block right here. This little bo block clamps the string up to the inside of the saddle. And it's just, just a compression like that. It just pinches it in place. But, like I said, you don't want to over tighten these, but you do definitely want to get them snug. Nothing like going for a whammy dive and your string's popping out of your saddle. Super sucks. Especially since this is not ideally a super fast process. So, it takes some time. In the live performance setting, you can definitely make or break your, your entire night. So, I'm go back up here. Try to get a good camera angle. Okay. Now, remember, take your pliers. Check to make sure that your string post or your uh, tuning post is nice and secured. And take your string. Now, what I like to do here, so you can see, flip the camera back around again. This is a little hole that, oh, come on camera, focus. It's a little hole that your string goes through. And just to kind of make everyone's life easier, what I like to do is kind of set it to a position where it's nice and lined up with the fretboard. That way everything's nice and smooth. But, you take your string, feed it on through that itty bitty little hole. Like I said, everybody does this a little bit differently. For me, this is typically I've found to get the right amount of wraps. You take about three fingers. Like I said, my hands are a little bit bigger. Make a little bridge at your nut right here. Pull it on there just a little snug. Give it a nice kink right there. Bend. I'm going to take, put your first wrap above the tail and you rest below it and let me try to get a real good view here for a second so you can see this do its thing because this is pretty slick looking it does it so so right here if you can see it spinning around I know that my super great photo skills are really going quite the way here, but it's going to come back around 
and pinch this tail in place right here and this is not how it stays in place I mean just just the bend and the tension from the string will hold it in place but this is an extra precaution just pinch your tail so come around and if you can see from the low quality resolution here it's now got a layer above the tail and below the tail and that's coming back around and pinching that's how you want to do it pretty slick now I did start a YouTube channel for my band page but I cuss too much to be talking on there so I figure I'll do it here on the Facebook where they'll just take the video down and report me or something or something down okay now like I said you don't want to tune this right away you just want to get it close because it's all going to be a balancing act and we're going to have to retune it a billion times anyway so I'm going to go ahead and get my handy dandy little tuner on here this is just the display screen that shows me kind of what note I'm on where I need to go these Petersons are a little difficult to read in the beginning we're looking for an A right here so I get it pretty close to A but I don't get it perfect now just so you can kind of see this meter here It gives me a readout of my note, and depending on the direction that the wheel is spinning, I'll either need to go higher or lower. It's pretty slick. It's a chromatic tuner. Most of them are nowadays. But yeah, like I said, you just want to get it kind of close, because we'll have to tune this a billion times anyway, so there ain't really no point in getting perfect with it. Not right away. So we'll do that. Now, two strings done. On to the next. Take my handy dandy string winder. I like to give it a little flick here to so I can hear the pitch. Make sure I'm going the right way. My eyes don't always work the best, so I gotta listen to it with my ears. Get it nice and slack, slack, uh, slacked, and uh, pull your tail off. Watch your fingers. Like I said, it'll poke you. It'll poke you real good. <clears throat> Take this guy. Once again. Take your Allen wrench, your number three. Go ahead and loosen up that locking lock. Take your excess string, put it off to the side, lay it on the couch, poke yourself in the butt, you know, the good stuff. <clears throat> Alright. So. Come on now. Okay. Last pack here. Now, typically if you're going to hydrate your fretboard, which mine doesn't necessarily need it, but I'm going to anyway, typically it works better if you take all your strings off, but the lemon oil ain't going to hurt them none. If anything, it'll kind of clean them and get a little dirty, but but um, I'll show you a little trick for how we're going to do that when I get all the strings on and, and the bridge all leveled up, and then we'll worry about cleaning and conditioning. But like I said, take your string, right at the wrap, take your dikes, cut it right beneath the wrap there. Get your ball in right off. It's left with just a decent little poker there. And go ahead and stick it in the saddle hole, about a quarter inch. I know it might be kind of repetitive, but I've got to keep saying it. I've shown people this a million times, and by the time I get to the low E, the sixth string, everybody's like, well, how did you do that, though? Like, oh, same way I did it the last five times, but that's okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and get detailed with it all along the way. Don't tighten it too tight. You feel it start to slip. Ooh, you better call somebody. Now, this guitar is not exactly properly intonated, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, it's a pretty lengthy process if you don't have the proper tool. Now, I have the right tool that you would use for uh, your traditional Floyd Roses, your originals, your specials, um, your 1000s, your pros. 
Uh, but the tool, unfortunately, does not work for uh, these Ibanez, Ibanez uh, edge systems. Uh, there is a really fancy tool that I'd like to get that will do every type of floating bridge. Uh, it's about 30 bucks, I think. I just haven't quite blown the money on it yet. Really like to, though. It's a really nice tool to have. And uh, typically, you don't need to keep intonating your guitars, but um, it definitely, definitely makes a difference. If you ever notice, you go to hit like a power chord, and you hear a little bit of a warble. Um, typically, that's the easiest indicator that uh, your intonation is off. And all that means is that your notes aren't exactly true. Yeah, sure, they can still be in tune because of how scale length works on your fretboard. <clears throat> um, the notes might not be true to the fretboard. Uh, it all is a balancing system of uh, measurements that, that kind of dictates um, <clears throat> what it's going to end up sounding like in the end. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, your, that's your big thing. Yep, I got that lined up, so I'm going to take my pliers again. Like I said, it's either pliers or, I believe, a 10 millimeter wrench. Just make sure that nut is nice and snug. It'll help with the tuning stability. Go ahead and take your string, feed her through the hole again. Pull her on through, make a little bridge, three fingers at the nut. Pull it a little snug, not too tight, give it a little kink. You know, like a feet thing or something. I'm just kidding. Wrap that around the top. Grab the winder or your fingers. Go ahead and start spinning her around. Make sure your tail gets pinched. One layer on top, the rest on the bottom. Go ahead and get it spinning, 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 spinning. Tails out of the way here. Get the tuner back on. Like I said, you don't want it perfect right now. You want it real close, but not perfect. For F, C, D, E, there's an F. Like I said, I'm using a lower tuning than traditional. It's a whole step down, I believe, and uh. You know, the process itself is not different for different tuning. It's a little bit different here. So now, if you can see here, from what I showed you earlier, my bridge has remained basically in the same condition. Like I said, this is pretty close, but you want it about right there instead, which is like just a little far to difference, but. That's, that's how I'm going to want it. And yes, I am that picky. It does make a difference. Especially when you do some sick whammy pulls like I like to do. So we got those. Now, guess what's next? <laughs> Fourth string. So go ahead. And start detuning it. Get it nice and slacked up. Pull her on out. Stubborn little thing. Pick your Allen wrench, your number three. Go ahead and loosen up that string clamp in your saddle. Ooh, that one's extra crusty. Now, your strings will rust for all sorts of reasons. Um, typically, the alkalinity of your wet content is the biggest uh, the biggest thing and I know guitar players um, who never rust their strings uh, and then on the flip side I know guitar players who uh, will rust the hell out of them the very first time they play their guitar which is kind of funny and doesn't mean nothing it's not a hygiene problem it's it's uh, simply that it's a alkalinity thing it's more than just your, your diet or genetics it's all sorts of different reasons but you know it's not your fault if you rust out your strings it happens man no big deal pretty great players in Cedar Rapids even who are known for kind of rusting their strings out immediately. Yep, like I said, take your dikes, cut it right below the wrap. Now on these on these wound strings, the wrap's a little different. You just want to make sure you go to the very bottom of it. You don't want to leave any of that excess on because it's just a slip point later on. Snip that off. Go ahead and take your string end. 
number three Allen. Put it back in here, about a quarter inch until you feel it hit the, the edge there. Go ahead and snug it down real tight, but not too tight. Dang old phone's gonna die. Let me grab this charger here real quick, figure out how to prop the phone up. So I get this in here. Hmm. I might be able to finish the video with that, but I'm not gonna risk it. I'll be right back, folks. Two seconds. Maybe three, maybe four. I'm gonna keep on counting down until I run back to the door. Got my handy dandy charger, gonna plug it on in here so the phone don't die and you folks aren't left in the dark. Cause I've already showed you how to do the this part, but the hard part's coming, you see. Get this guy plugged in here. Okay. Alright, so get that plugged in. Now I gotta figure out how to prop the phone up. <laughs> Dang it, Dr. The J-Man, what are you doing? Yeah, since I don't need these screwdrivers, I'll use this one. Maybe. Um, well, that's unfortunate. Ah, DVD cases. <laughs> All right, Steven Seagal, you're gonna help me out this time. Steven Seagal, man. Out for justice. When I was growing up, my mom wouldn't let me rent Jackie Chan, John Claude Van Damme, or Steven Seagal movies. She couldn't stand them. That's bullshit. Right? Jackie Chan is my number one hero of all time. I don't care what anybody says, you can fight me. Then you can fight Dr. Jackie Chan. Alright, there we go. There we go. Alright, Steven Seagal, you're finally useful. Alright. So. Back to the string change. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and line up the hole with the fretboard. Take your pliers. Make sure that the post is nice and secure. Ten millimeter, I believe. Or a pair of pliers. You don't want to use needle nose. You'll screw yourself all up. Go ahead and feed your string tail through the hole. Three finger bridge at the nut. Give it a little bit of space here. See strings a little thicker. And put a kink in it. One wrap around the top, the rest around the bottom. Get my handy dandy string winder out here. Alright, spin it up. Ooh, it's spinning. Look at that. That's pretty. Now, I can do this whole process. 12 minutes but with the video here and making sure I do a good job explaining everything to you nice folks I want to make sure that I'm nice and thorough taking me just a little bit longer I don't know how long this video has been going on already couldn't really say on the screen but that's okay so like I said you want to get it close but not exactly perfect That's what I thought. Yeah, tuner was reading kind of weird there for a second. All right. Now, once I get this all set up, I'll make a nice video of playing this guitar for you too. I'll do that in a separate little deal. <clears throat> all right. So that one's good there. So let's repeat this process two more times. Okay. Go ahead and. Detune your string all the way. Let it slack. Get some space. I sure do like these string winders. It was not that I was ever against them. It's just that I thought they were unnecessary. And uh, then, you know, working at Guitar Center. And I wasn't the tech or nothing, but I did a lot of string changes to help out. And it sure does make a difference when you got to fire out 50 of them in a day. Take your number three Allen wrench. Unloosen your block here. Get your string up and out of the way. 
little pokey in the butt on the couch later. A whole other story there. How did I just do with that wrench? Oh, there it is. Okay. So we'll take the next string. Take your dikes again. Cut it off right at the wrap. Oh, excuse me. Now, on a typical <clears throat> stop tail or string through guitar, you won't have to cut the ball in. It's only because you pinch um, <clears throat> you pinch the string in to the saddle with these. That's how it holds it in. Now, there have been a few manufacturers of tremolo systems that you haven't had to cut the ball end off of. Um, but for these, you do. It's, in my opinion, not really the greatest design, but it's been around since 84, I want to say. And uh, it's kind of been basically the same ever since. My favorite tremolo uh, company, Kaler, um, does theirs a little different because you don't need to trim the ball end off. It hooks right in. There's not even a process of clamping it, which is really slick. It makes string changes hella quick. But Kaler's, you just don't really see them a whole lot anymore. The company's definitely still around. Their biggest endorsed stars, uh, uh, endorsed artist is Kerry King of Slayer. Jeff Hanneman used to use them too. I've owned two guitars with Kalers. Um, both guitars the same make and model, uh, just different paint jobs on them, a JH200 uh, LTD. First one was a digital camo, second one was black. Really didn't have the black one very long, wish I did. I Slayer signature guitar player, I, uh, or Slayer's guitar player Jeff Hanneman's signature guitar from Slayer. Uh, I sold the second Slayer guitar to uh, fund my ticket to go see Slayer the first time. So I suppose it was an even trade, I guess. Get that nice and snug, but not too tight. I remember, if you remember from earlier in the video, I already adjusted my fine tuners here so that I had a good neutral position. So we'll take and line the hole back up with the fretboard. Right about there. Take your pliers. Go ahead and snug that nut. Or a 10 millimeter wrench, I believe. Or a socket. Preferably a socket. You can definitely use the box end of a wrench if you want. Open it. As long as you're gripping it, not ripping it. Go ahead and slide that on through. Make a little bridge. Your nut, three fingers. Go ahead and put a kink in the tail. Keep it snug. Go ahead and wrap around the top of the post. Ooh gets a little trickier when you get to the thicker strings. Like I said, you want to be careful not to bend them anywhere else. It creates a fail point. Take the string winder. i got to keep looking around at my tools because I am that guy that will lose something that's in his hand. For sure I am that guy. Even if I'm not smoking. <clears throat> but, look at that guy going there. Grab your tuner million different tuners out there. I really like this one. Peterson happens to be one of the most accurate tuners on the market. Like I said, you don't need it perfect. It just needs to be close. Now, just a reference for you to kind of see what the bridge has been doing this whole time I've been doing this, because, like I said, it's a constant counterbalance. Here tension. The bridge has stayed pretty nice. It's still right in the range where I want it and will likely balance out perfectly by the time I tune it right. Because yeah, actually, shit. See, it's already right now, right at a good neutral position to where I want it. This is right how I want my bridge to look on the Edge 2 systems. I believe it's the Edge 2. I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, if it's too far back, you won't be able to get as much of a high range out of your pull, and if it's too far forward, you, you're uh, risking the chance of pulling it too far high and then snapping your strings immediately. And I went through a lot of trial and error with that back in the day um, before I really figured out that you want them balanced. You want them balanced really nicely. Not only does it look good, but it performs well, and that's, that's number one right there. So a string winder, go ahead and take off our last string here, the sixth. And guys, I think this video is going to be a little bit more of a success than I wanted it to be. Uh, honestly, I kind of wanted this to be a big old disaster. 
so that you can see what to do if you happen to screw up real bad. Because troubleshooting is the name of the game. It's not always going to be this smooth, even, even if I'm doing it, even if somebody better than me is doing it. So, kind of lucked out with that, but like I said, I almost kind of wish something would have screwed up real bad, just so I can show you. Um, maybe next time I restring one of my guitars with a, like actual Floyd on it, um, I'll screw it all up. Just because I have all the fun tools to make the uh, adjustments to those too. Go ahead and take your number three. Go ahead and undo your string clamp. This one's awfully crusty. I sure do chug that one a lot. <laughs> Alright, get that up and out the way. Last string here. Can you guess what I'm going to do? Good job, kids! You're going to take a dike. Go ahead and cut it below the wraps. Don't leave any of the wrap on. Come on in. Go ahead and throw it on over there so don't poke you in the eyeball later. Go ahead. Quarter inch. Stick it back in the saddle. Line it up real nice with the string groove. It's already there, machined from the factory. Get it nice and snug, but not too tight. Strip these parts, you're going to want to kick yourself in the nuts, I promise. Nice and snug. Alright. That's how I'm going to want it. So take it, go back over here. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and line up the hole. Pretty good there. Take your pliers. Or your 10 millimeter. Make sure it's nice and snug. Already really good there. Go ahead and feed her on through. Make a little bridge, three fingers. We're going to give this one a little bit more space here between the fingers. Here you go. Uh, if you've got tiny little hands, you might be able to do four fingers. But put the kink in it. We're doing that to compensate for the extra thickness of the string, you see. The bigger diameter makes the wrap radius different. So. Once above, the rest below. Make sure it gets up and out the way here, the proper way. All right. Now, on all the other strings, I said go ahead and don't worry about getting them perfectly tuned. But now, we're going to start doing that. So, on your last string here, go on ahead with it. Now, a little process a good friend of mine showed me. Your strings, since they're new, they're going to want to stretch. And as they stretch, they'll detune. It happens. Um, your strings typically... Uh, stretch for about a week or two before they start holding their tune and they're good to go. Um, but this process kind of makes that go a little quicker. Typically you can stretch them real nice uh, before, before you get them perfect and uh, you can cut that wait time to you know, maybe a day or two and then you're holding tuning properly. But what I do is take my fingers just like this, thumb and index maybe, Take put your index underneath the string, your thumb and you just kind of pull on them a little bit here. You don't want to pull them too far, but you want to pull them just enough. It's going to go ahead and stretch your strings, get them ready to start holding their tune better. Fun, fancy little trick. I really like it. it really made a hell of a difference for me when I first started doing it. So I make sure and do it every time now. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that. All six strings here. A seven string, go ahead and do it seven times. Eight string, eight times, nine string, so on and so forth. I got a twelve string, I do it twelve times. You best believe I do it twelve times. Absolutely, I do it twelve times. Twenty-four if I double it down, you know what I'm saying? Alright, there we go. So good. Strings nice to tune. Bridge still sitting basically where I want it. Let's go ahead and start the tuning process. Like I said, you want to keep your fine tuners nice and balanced, uh, in a neutral position before you get it nice and tuned. That way you have plenty of range when you get going. So grab the Peterson clipper back on here. 
And it doesn't really matter. A lot of folks say that, you know, oh, you want to start with the sixth string. Oh, you want to start with the first string. Oh, you want to do one, six, two, four, three, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. They're all going to be at the same tension in the end anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. As long as you've got the proper balance, it doesn't matter what string you start with and with. I think for a second. I played in standard for so long that using these different tunings kind of screws with me sometimes. Like I said, I'm in D standard. So from 6 to 1st, low E to high E traditionally, it's D, G, C, F, A, D. As Peterson is the most accurate tuner out there, but because of how all this balancing works, you don't necessarily need to get it perfect. The worst thing is that even if you do get it perfect, as soon as you go ahead and put your string locks back on, it pulls it back out of tune. Hence the reason for the fine tuners. Okay, so first tuning. Now. My bridge has started to creep on me a little bit. It started going up. Now it's a little bit higher than I want it to. So now this is where the fun stuff comes in. So, a few different ways you can do this. You can try detuning all of them just right and blah, 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 blah. Or you can just skip all that and do the easy way. I know most folks like the easy way. So, take your Phillips and your claw. And you've got two pretty long Phillips screws back here. What you want to do is you want to tighten them. You want to keep it pretty even, but I'm going to give it about a half of a turn here. Let's see what that does for me. Okay, not much, so I'm going to go ahead and give it another half turn. But since my claw is a little uneven, I'm going to go a little bit further on the one side. And what this is doing is putting more tension on the springs pulling your bridge on the fulcrum system back a little bit, which is what I need it to do. Like I said, the more errors that pop up, the better, because this is only going to help you folks out. So we're going to go another couple more turns, and when you're doing this, as your bridge pulls back, it's going to tighten your strings and raise the pitch. So you don't want to go too far without checking your tuning again, because otherwise you'll screw yourself all up, I promise. So. The other thing is, is when you start getting into your exact tuning, I uh, typically like to go ahead and use a pick. Um, that way I get a nice, sharp, precise attack, and it'll tell me on a more professional level where I need to be. Strings are still stretching. So, almost there. Check the bridge. Yep, she's still creeping. That's alright. That's okay. We, we wanted this to happen. That way you folks know what to do. So, like I said, actually here, just to give you kind of a representation of what's going on here. <clears throat> Spin this camera back around. So, if you remember from earlier in the video, the bridge was sitting pretty level, and it cocked back a little bit. Now it's kind of cocked forward. Now, this is where it's sitting. This is about where you want it to sit. So I need to bring it a little bit more. Now, like I said, you want to go ahead and tighten your tension screws in the back for your spring system. So, get kind of a better angle to show you kind of what I've already been doing. Spring claw, tension screws. So you want to take, give them a couple turns here, whatever it's going to take. Get them nice and tight. Keep track of what you're doing. You want you want your spring claw as level as possible, as square as possible. Check the bridge. It's 
raising the pitch here a little bit, so we're getting there. But I'm going to need to turn it just a little bit more to make sure that this thing's going to be nice and smooth for me. Get a few more little rotations in here. <clears throat> you don't want to go too far because it the tension builds exponentially the further you stretch the springs. So you want to keep that in mind. What you got with a half turn, you can get with a quarter turn later on, kind of thing. So I'll go ahead, back to tuning, check everything out, grab my pick to make sure I get a nice even attack. Yep, they raised the pitch here, so we're going to go through and make sure everything is right where it needs to be. Oh, yep, she's being stubborn. That's okay. This is what we wanted. Like I said, the more errors that come up while I do this, the more I can show you folks. So, like I said, go ahead and tighten up them springs. Right, you want to make sure and keep some pretty solid force on this so you don't strip your screws out. And you can even... Just to give you a little bit of an extra advantage, go ahead and pop your whammy bar in however it may assemble in. Mine just pops in, which is slick. Put some pressure on it to release. As I pull on the bar, the springs kind of move and the tone block move. So I'm going to go ahead and rest the whammy bar down to take some tension off the springs to allow me to tighten up the spring uh, claw a little bit easier. Make everybody's job a little bit easier. <clears throat> now if you find that you have to max your spring claw all the way, you probably did something wrong here and you need to start going back through start the retuning process because it does not need to be that crazy now I'm pretty close that's pretty typical though it's no big deal we're on track here we're getting there This is uh, still pretty smooth considering. Let's see what that bridge looks like. Jeez, almost perfect, almost perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead. I put that bar. In. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the springs another quarter turn and we're going to go ahead and call it good. Get your Phillips back out. Okay, good enough for me. Or as Luke and I like to say, close enough for metal. So, Go ahead and check the tuning, and if we're slick here, this will be the last time we'll need to do it with these uh, tuning machines. But yeah, I, uh, like I said, I do appreciate you folks watching this video. If any of you have any questions about it, feel free to leave some comments, and I will do my best to answer any questions you folks may have. See, that's perfect, and this is what we want. So, now you can kind of...
kind of see what's going on here. So, the bridge is now sitting exactly how I want it. Like I said, some of these bridge systems are going to be a little bit different. The Floyd Roses are a little easier to keep track of because it's a flat base plate. But these Ibanez Edge, Ibanez Edge systems are a little goofy. So, if it's too far back, it's wrong. If it's too far forward, it's wrong. And right now we got it just perfect. That's how we want it. Now, some folks I know will argue with you and say that you want to keep this top angle bevel up here parallel with the guitar. That is not true. That is not what you want to do. Folks will say, I talked to Ibanez, I talked to Ibanez, they said that's how I Well, no, um, that's not how you want to do it. I talked to Ibanez, too. This is proper, I promise. So, <clears throat> that's some good representatives uh, for Ibanez while I was working at Guitar Center. Good folks, taught me quite a few things. So, we're going to go ahead and take the tuner off for now. I'm going to go ahead and go back and put my string clamps back on. And these are real slick. Um, it's easy to do this wrong, so I'll kind of show you here. So this is what I'm talking about. Two-piece system. You got your actual clamp. You got your, your little Allen head uh, machine screw. And these things, they've got kind of a, kind of a little triangle kind of shape going on on the top and the bottom is a little bit concaved it's done so that it matches your your kind of nut there but what you want to do just as a rule of thumb the line going from the peak you want to run that parallel uh, with your 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 fretboard so what I mean is you want the peak of the clamp going the same direction as your fretboard and that's how you'll know you'll you got it the right way I have yet to ever see a string clamp that was uh, opposite of that, so it's a pretty good rule to stick by. And since we've got um, it tuned almost perfectly with our tuning machines, we're good to go ahead and clamp this down. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these hands started before I hit them with the 3mm Allen wrench. Um, now, like I said, with the parts and the saddles, you do not want to over tighten these because you will strip them and you don't want to kick yourself in the nuts, I promise. You don't want to do that. So, go ahead and get them tight in there. If you think they're too tight, you're probably right. Just remember that. Pretty good, pretty good thing to live by. Now, if I had to do any sort of extra adjustments, like pickup height or, or uh, truss rod adjustments, I'll sh I'd show you those too, but thankfully this uh, 700 series Ibanez is a pretty high performance guitar, pretty well made, pretty well maintained by me and the previous owners, so it doesn't need any other adjustments at the moment. I'll still check though, because that's what you want to do. Yep, neck's nice and straight as an arrow, just like you want it. Now, pickup height, there's some science behind it, sure. But what sounds good to me might not sound good to you. I, I find that your, tip, your, your pickups typically tend to react better uh, the closer they are to the strings. Um, but uh, some folks don't like the, the minor tonality changes you get from that. So it's all, it's all personal preference. Basically, the way I figured, as long as they're not touching the strings when you're playing, you're doing okay. Sometimes people experience volume differences the different pickup heights and stuff like that so just all depends but I keep mine pretty even I keep them as close to the strings uh, as possible uh, without touching generally uh, but I play a lot of high gain kind of chunky stuff and that seems to work right so I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and snug one more time here all right so we're gonna do one final little <clears throat> string stretch just kind of make sure this process isn't too crazy Whatever you do, keep your 3mm Allen wrench with you for at least a week while playing with your guitar because you're going to need to take them locking nuts off and retune it again, I'm sure. I mean, occasionally you'll get lucky and not have to screw up it a whole bunch, but they can't all be winners, you know what I mean. So we're going to go ahead and get our tuner back on here. This is just a display screen here that I'm reading. It lets me know kind of where I'm at. So for your fine tuners, it's a big old 
the screw here, you just you just tune it with your fingers. It doesn't take any force, and if it does take force, you're doing something wrong. You better be careful. What the hell did I do with my pick? Oh, there it is. Huh. All right, so we'll go through and we'll retune. And almost there. These fine tuners work real slow down in your bridge system, which is A-OK. -okay. Because you don't need to make big adjustments. You just need to make them work well enough to do their thing. And you can get it perfect with the fine tuners. That's how you're going to want to do it anyway. And like I said, this guitar not completely properly intonated. I mean, it's awfully close, but without that fancy tool I was talking about earlier, it makes it a little difficult. Floyd Rose tool they call the Floyd Key, and I was fortunate enough to get one. They're pretty cheap. I've seen them run between $12 and $30, so it all depends on where you buy them from. Guitar is nice and in tune, so what we're going to do now, look, I know some of you beginner guitar players like to think you're all edgy and keep your little string tails on, but don't, don't do that. Come on, man. You're just going to poke yourself in the eyeball or somebody else, and uh, look, man, these don't really protect me like people think. That don't, that don't happen. I will definitely poke myself in the eyeball of your strings, especially when I'm drooling over your gear, so don't do it. Save yourself. Save me. Save my fucking eyeballs, all right? Cut your damn tails off. Let's go ahead and take your dikes. Now, your diagonal cutters here are going to have kind of the flat cut side and indented side. To get the best cut, I'm going to go ahead and butt up that flat side up against your surface you're cutting on. Now, don't be a dipshit. <clears throat> cut the main line. <laughs> Screw you all up. Just only cut the tail. And I get it as close to the wraps as possible. Go ahead and snip it off. Now, you want to cut these off because you'll poke yourself. And the closer you get to the, the tuning uh, peg, the less chance you'll have of accidentally snagging it. Because, yeah, it'll definitely fuck you up. It'll ruin your day real fast. So, we got that. Now, after I got these all snipped, I'm going to go ahead and put that backing plate back on. And we'll give her a bath. So, get your backing plate. Now, some of these are pretty uniform, uh, and uh, sometimes people will put them on the wrong way. Um, typically, all of your pit guards and uh, backing plates are going to have a bevel for the screw head, for their pan heads, flat tops. So, um, I mean, you want the screw to go into the bevel, so that means the other side's down. Um, as far as direction, on which way they should face. These slots, and not all of them have them, but these slots are there so that you can reach uh, the screws for your spring claw. So typically you want to put them in a direction where you can get a screwdriver in there if you need to. Oh, excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> hand start all these little screws here. Six of them in total, typically. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, and then I'll go ahead and tighten these down. Like I said, we'll give her a nice bath. Just once again, I know I've said it a few times, I'll say it again. Uh, I really do appreciate you nice folks watching. If this helps you or anybody you know, share it with them. Um, I mean, there's some videos out there that are better, there's some videos that are out there that are worse. There's some different methods, but this is my method. Um, 15 years of playing, 17 years of working on guitars. It's been effective so far. A couple little adjustments and tweaks I've made here and there to my technique, but, you know, been basically the same since day one. Uh, you're thinking to yourself, 17 years of working on guitars, how the hell does that work if you've only been playing for 15? Well, growing up I had some buddies in a band, and the drummer's little brother, um, he played guitar, and I got to talking to him one time about how, you know, looking at your guitar, looks like it's probably pretty difficult to play, huh? He says, yeah, you know, there's a lot going on, blah, blah, blah. He says, well, no, not even that. And if you look, your strings are really high off your neck, you know, this is going on, that's going on. I says, I bet you if you did this, 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 and this, it'd probably be easier for you to play. 
He says, hell, well, let's find out. Mm -hmm. So, mm. so uh, that's what I did. But, um, no, we got that all on, so time to give her a bath. All right, get that up out the way here. So, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and hit that lemon oil I showed you. People, you can use linseed oil, and there's quite a few different brands. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is uh, just the one I have, Kaiser brand. Seems to work pretty nice. But um, like I said, typically you want to do this without your strings on, but it really is not going to hurt them at all. And uh, you want to kind of cover your electronics. It ain't going to hurt them, though. It's just, you know, liquid and electronics, you know. Go ahead and get a nice liberal coating on there. We're going to let that sit for a second while we go ahead and take our 65 polish clean up the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the headstock and this is where your nice fine microfiber cloth is going to come in handy. You don't want to use it to clean off the lemon oil, that's what the paper towels are for, but we'll go ahead and get this in here. And um, you know, this is half the fun of owning a guitar is cleaning it. Like I said, 44 have gone through my collection. I've got 13 and a half right now. I still really like cleaning them. It's nice. It's like when you got a fancy car and you want to hit it with the armor all and a nice turtle wax. Same sort of thing to me. And you got to figure this is a performance machine. That's the whole deal. This stuff is safe to use on any painted or finished surface. Uh, I've even found that with enough uh, pressure, it's even good at polishing uh, some of your metal hardware parts, which is pretty slick. But gives it a nice glossy shine, makes it look real pretty, shows up nice on pictures, makes all the homies watching you play your guitar really appreciate how pretty your instrument really is when you get it. Give it a nice good bath. So we'll keep her nice and clean. I like to keep my guitars cleaner and I keep myself from kind of grungy. No big deal. See, so y'all don't know because you're just watching me on the video. I smell just a little bit, which is nice. I've got this lemon oil dripping on my lap. It makes me smell like lemonade. Good stuff. So, cover up your electronics. Give it a nice polishing. You can do your sides too. Do every surface. Why not? I don't see why you wouldn't. Black likes to get dirty real quick. Shows up all your little finger smudges and stuff. So, when you can, get rid of all the dust, fingerprints, sweat beer, somebody spilled on it, Kool-Aid a couple of times, it's a whole different story I'll tell you about sometime, you know, get it in there all nice, that's good here, they make special tools to get underneath the strings, but they're a little, little unnecessary, I'm sure in a few years when I own one, I'll say otherwise, but, so now, we've let the uh, lemon oil do its thing, it doesn't take very long, depending on how dry your fretboard is, I keep mine pretty conditioned, so you don't need to worry about it too much, couple of rolls of paper towel here, fold it up nice so it can slide in any strings. It's easier to get it under the strings if you start by your pickups, because there's the most amount of space. Just get in there, get it nice and flat, shimmy that son of a bitch. Like I said, this process is way better to do without your strings on, but because of the whole tremolo system deal, we're just going to go ahead and do it like this. Makes a lovely sound too. <laughs> kind of makes your spine tingle. <sighs> so um like I said in the beginning of the video I had some plastic. It was from a straw actually uh, wedged down in the hole for my whammy bar. I did that because this is a compression fitting whammy bar unlike your typical screw collar or uh, threaded whammy bars. This one just pops in place. But it's still a little bit loose in there, so um, <clears throat> I stuck a little bit of the uh, plastic from a straw in the hole um, to kind of keep it nice and snug. When your whammy bar is nice and tight, uh, tricks like your, your flutters and dips and stuff work a lot easier. But it still sits snug enough. Kind of. can't remember. Yeah. Sweet! Well, there she is! 
Ibanez XPT 700, all restrung, looking pretty, looking mean, feeling extra clean. Thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate you. Much love, and uh, like I said, if this helps you, if this helps your friends, share it with them. You know, appreciate you. Take care.